say good morning. We're glad to be together to worship um, in the presence of uh, Christ this morning and to be able to honor and give him glory. Um, just a few announcements uh, before we begin. If um, Just a reminder, um, Operation Christmas Child, we have been collecting this month, we're collecting toothbrushes. And so um, that basket is in the back as we collect for boys ages 10 to 14. And what a joy it is to be able to look forward to fall to put those together. And it will be here before we know it. Um, and to be able to have the, those boxes filled has been a ministry. Uh, New Hope Bethel has participated with us in this ministry to be able to work together to be able to put these 300 boxes together. Also, just a reminder that Croman Coffee will begin the second Saturday in May, um, all the way through October, and it'll be on the second Saturdays from 8 to noon, and you'll hear a little bit more about that later in the service today, but what a great opportunity it is for us to be able to engage with our community and also to be able to meet new people. Just a reminder to update your info with Kristen. If you have a Fairpoint email address, they have been switched over to bright.net. But you need to um, let Kristen know if you've changed your email address um, so that you continue to get things from the office starting um, next week because I think all of the Fairpoint email addresses expire um, on April 30th. Another opportunity um, will be, uh, we will have on Sunday, May 7th, a time to listen and to discuss. We've been talking about the disaffiliation um, from the United Methodist Church. That is um, part of what uh, the United Methodist Church, the turmoil and the friction that has been uh, mounting for a number of years. But we've had several of these information um, little sessions. We had lunch one day. We had a question and answer. This is another opportunity to be able to listen and to discuss. Church Council is inviting you on Sunday, May 7th. We will have worship at 1030 um, in the fellowship hall on that day. And then we will have a very short worship service and then 11 o'clock have some snacks and um, just an opportunity to enter into this discussion. So we encourage you, Church Council encourages you to attend this. They have been listening and discerning about what our next steps are around this. And so they're asking you to please put that on your calendar. It is not a vote. It is not a debate. It is simply a time to listen, but is also um, open for discussion to be able to um, hear and talk about all sides of the issue. So you're invited to that. Um, we will have worship in the fellowship hall at 1030 on that day. And so we won't have to move from the fellowship, from the sanctuary to the fellowship hall. It will be a very short worship service. New Hope Bethel is invited to this as well. Um, so mark your calendar. That is only in um, two weeks from today. Um, and so we are under some time issues of where we need to start to look and make decisions about what our next steps are. And so today we begin a new sermon series called Come and See. During this time, um, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus appeared to many people to, um, in his resurrected body. And we are going to take a look today at the appearance that he had with two of his disciples on the road to Emmaus, and their eyes were opened. And so may we prepare our hearts and prepare our minds to worship in the presence of the living Christ.
Thank you, Sharon. Will you stand with me, um, join me for the call to worship that you will find printed on the screen. Sometimes good things are right in front of us and we don't see them. Open our eyes this day to see the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Oh God, you are a loving God and we ask you on this day to come and speak to our hearts today. May we, like those on the Emmaus Road, find your words burning with hope in our lives. Strengthen us and give us courage for the journey that is ahead. And we pray all of this in Christ's name. Amen. Let us sing and let us lift our voices together as we sing, Open the Eyes of My Heart. may be seated and I invite the children to come. You got the tape measure still? All right. You're not going to forget about that tape measure, are you? He wants you to scoot over. <laughs> I think we all fit, don't we? Well, I want to tell you, uh, it's not really a story, but you know, when I was really little, I was probably your age, and you know what? I kept bumping into things around my house. I had to, to watch television. I had to sit real close to it. If I wanted to see something, I held it real close uh, to my eyes. Yeah, those candles are hot. 
you know, I had to hold things real close to my face. And you know what? My mom and dad took me to the eye doctor. You do, you have rocks in there? Oh, we have rocks and I'll tell you later, okay? So my mom and dad took me to the doctor and you know what they said I needed? I needed to wear glasses, you know? And you know what? When I put on glasses, you know, the edges of things weren't fuzzy anymore. They became what? Clear, didn't they? You like to wear glasses? Well, I'm, I'm glad you do. <laughs> I know you don't. Um, and so things became clear again. Well, you know, sometimes... <laughs> okay. And do you know that sometimes things aren't just clear in our world, are they? We don't understand things that are going on, and things aren't clear. Well, you know, there's a story in the Bible about two men walking down the road, and they didn't understand what was going on, and Jesus came to walk with them. And you know what? When they broke bread and they ate dinner with them, they started to understand. They started to see clearer. Well, sometimes, just like glasses help us see things clear, Jesus helps us to see things clearer as well when we walk with him and when we pray and when we read our scriptures. Like what? Like windows. Windows help us see things clearly outside, don't they? All right, can we put our hands together and pray? Dear God, thank you for helping us to see things clearly. Help us to read your word and pray so that we understand. We love you and thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you may go to kids' worship. This brings us to our moment of glory sighting in our very first one. We want to say congratulations um, to Miles and Quinn Gibson who were married this past Thursday. And we say uh, congratulations and just may God pour out upon them his blessings upon their commitment and uh, blessings upon their life together. And so if you... Uh, it, Send them a card saying congratulations to them. Tell them you're thinking about them. What great news and a way to celebrate. Also, another glory sighting is our chrome and coffee and um, how we continue to walk into those next steps uh, that we have and that we're taking. Uh, Denny and Jean Zakrich have joined our Next Steps team as we meet with Ideal each month, and Denny's going to come today um, and share with us about Chrome and Coffee and about all that is going on, and Denny is dressed for the part today. While you need to get out your poodle skirt, dust, dust off your Hawaiian shirts, guys, find the fuzzy dice up in the closet somewhere and hang them on your rearview mirror, because Chroma Coffee is coming. Um, as you can see, the first, we're going to meet the, the second Saturday of each month. It's going to be six events planned this summer, and he's put a, sh a, a shot up there of a a cruise in that I was involved with last summer. I don't think ours is going to be quite this big. <laughs> and that was a rainy day, actually. It was, it was amazing. That was up in uh, Clare, Michigan. I'm on a, 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 I usually go on this tour every summer. It goes from, it starts down in, in uh, Coldwater, Michigan, goes all the way to Sheboygan, Michigan, following Old Route 27. And every town along the way rolls out there red carpet and, in, and they embrace all the old the cars that, that are coming through their community. This was in Clare. 
One, I think there's might be 200 and 250 cars there, but one year they said there were 500 cars on that street on, in, in Clare, Michigan. So it's a, a great place to uh, like-minded people, I guess, get together and, and commune. Now we're gonna have another meeting, the May, May the 3rd, Wednesday after next, um, and we're another planning, planning and uh, preparation meeting. So uh, down here in the uh, meeting room in the, uh, in the uh, education building. So everybody's invited. We have a really great committee working hard, getting things together, and uh, we're getting the promotional stuff out there. That's a big thing on the first one, because it's not really, when you, the first one is hard because people aren't uh, engaged yet. So that's the thing, we need to, to get the word out. If, if you want flyers to, to place in places, let's let me know. I've got a whole ream of them to, uh, to hang up. I've been going around putting signs up and, and getting the flyers out. So, and, um, so I don't know, that's, that's what we're doing. So if, if you need to contact somebody about what you'd like to help with, you can call me. Uh, they can give you my number in the office or, or whatever. So. Uh, or Jean. Janine and Janine are, uh, Barrett are really helping a lot too on the it's Engage Committee. So we're just planning to connect with a lot of folks and uh, that's how, what we're up to. Thank you. Thank you, Denny, and what a great and awesome work this team has done together, um, putting this together. And we've seen glory sightings of just the teamwork that has happened and come and be a part of it. It is a way to engage them in our community so that we can connect with them as well. And we sing and we say glory to God as we sing. come to this moment of um, our prayers. If you'll take your weekly notes and have your prayer concerns before you, also remembering Barb Settlemeyer, um, but also remembering um, put Noah Bo, who um, had to have some uh, surgery done this week, um, and also Leah Meyer, who is um, Edith Brooks's niece, um, that we go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we come to you being reminded once again that you are the one who has created us. You have created all the earth. Not only have you created us, but you sent your son to redeem us so that we would live with the hope of eternity. You loved us that much, but you never wanted to leave us alone and you sent the power of the Holy Spirit upon us to sustain us each and every day of our lives. You are so patient with us. You've brought us through Easter where we have rejoiced at the news of the resurrection of your Son, our Savior. You were there with the disciples in the upper room and you are with us when we remain hidden with our fears. <clears throat> you were with Thomas when he had doubts 
and anxieties and you are with us in the midst of our doubts and in the midst of our anxieties. And you come along with us on this journey, on this road where you come to us in our everyday lives. You're just not with us on Sunday mornings in the midst of uh, worship services, but you are with us every day of the week in the midst of our work, in the midst of our play, and in the midst of our pain and agony. But we come admitting that we aren't always ready for you. And that we don't always see you. And that we always don't sense your presence. We admit that we let so many things in our lives crowd you out. And these intrusions blot out our awareness of your presence. Oh God, forgive us for our blindness. Forgive us for our stubbornness. We know that it is only by the power of the Holy Spirit that we can keep our hearts open to you. To be able to see and tell the good things of, the, of all the good things that you've done in our lives. We sit in this moment of quietness. With our hearts fully open to you. say, come Holy Spirit, fill us. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your grace. Fill us with your strength and your wisdom. Enable us to be your presence in the world. Showing your love and your grace and being your hands and your feet to a hurting world. And we share our concerns and lift them before you today. knowing that, that those names are whispered before the throne of grace and that you are at work. But you're also nudging us to be your hands and feet. To deliver your message of hope. To deliver your message of peace and comfort and love and grace. Continue to work in our hearts, molding us and making us into your disciples. We pray for the journey ahead, for wisdom, for discernment, for each step that we take. May we take those steps with you in mind. And we pray all of this as you've taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand together as we lift our voices as we sing, trust and obey. may be seated. We start this sermon series on a come and see because um, after the resurrection, people were coming. And they wanted to see and experience the risen Christ. And Jesus appeared many times to many different people after the resurrection um, to invite them into that relationship so that they could see for themselves. And so today we look at encountering the risen Christ and how do we encounter Christ in our lives and how are our eyes opened. You know, statistics show that between 5 and 10% of the world's population suffer from color blindness. It's by, by far the most common form of color blindness is the inability to be able to see the shades of color of either red or green. Although this condition affects the ability to be able to see color, it doesn't affect or prevent a person from seeing. In other words, they have the ability to be able to see something and to see something clearly, but they are unable to see it in all the fullness of the color that um, what nor normally is seen. People with this disability function in, in life, many of them are not even aware that uh, they have the condition because they really are not aware of what they are missing. 
They have the ability to see a uh, garden full of flowers, to see all the shapes and the sizes, but they miss out on this eye-popping color that are obvious to others um, that don't suffer from the condition. You know, color blindness is much like spiritual blindness. You know, we can see the reality of a situation. We can see everything that is going on around us. We can name even all the shapes and, and the sizes of all the problems. But what we miss out on sometimes is what God is revealing to us that is really right there in front of our eyes because we are spiritually blind sometimes when we look at these situations. And when, we're spir when we suffer from spiritual blindness, we look at situations strictly from a human standpoint using our human reasoning instead of through this lens of, of Scripture and where God is at work in the world. You know, that is one of the reasons that we do glory sightings. Glory sightings keep us in this practice of looking at the world and looking at what is happening, happening around us and seeing it through what God is doing instead of our own thought processes of human, human reasoning. I want us to take a beautiful sunset, for example. I can reason, I can look at that sunset, and I can reason through science about where that sun is located in the sky, why it is the color it is, and go through all these scientific explanations. But if that's the only way that I look at that sunset, if that is the only way I think of it, I really miss out on all the beauty that God is revealing to me. I miss out on this gracious gift of this masterpiece in the sky of art that God has given to me in this moment as a gift to be reminded of his grace and his glory. That's what's really happening in our, our scripture passage this morning. These two men are walking along this road outside Jerusalem, this road that leads to Emmaus. They know the many facts of, of, of the crucifixion. They know that the tomb is empty. They know all of the details of, of what has happened and what has transpired in Jerusalem over these three days. But they are blind to the reality of what all of this truly means. They see and they hear, but they don't fully grasp what is so easy for us to understand when we look at it through spiritual eyes. In other words, they see all the shapes and all the sizes of what is going on, but they are missing out on this beautiful gift that has been given to them in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I want us to hear these words from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35 today. Now the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, 
their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all of this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together, And saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. The word of God for the people of God and we all say, thanks be to God. Well, here we have these two Christ followers, these two disciples of Jesus Cleopas and this unnamed disciple walking along this road, talking and discussing these facts. What has happened and transpired in Jerusalem over these last three days? Now, the literal translation of the, from the Greek language here indicates that it was more than just a casual conversation. The Greek indicates that there was this dispute or this uh, going on uh, between the two of Cleopas and this unnamed disciple. In other words, there was passion, um, there was emotion in how they talked to each other about what had happened in Jerusalem. These two people walking along desperately attempting to reconcile their expectations of this one that they have believed was the Messiah with this tragic ending that has just happened. All of this discussion All of this fact-finding and back and forth and this emotion is coming from their human reasoning, their human understanding. They've seen this tragic death. They've seen this burial. There's this missing body now. And as they're walking along this road, passionately talking about this, we have this man come to join them on this journey. We know this to be Jesus. Scripture tells us that. 
And Jesus begins to ask them questions about their conversation. Notice he doesn't just tell them, but he asks them questions about this heavy discussion that they're having. This heavy discussion where they have considered Christ to be a failure on the cross of Calvary. They're so obsessed with this discussion and what they thought to be happening that they don't even recognize that it's Jesus himself that has joined them on this journey. You know, have you ever been so angry, so obsessed about something that you can't get it off your mind? Especially if you're driving it down the road and, and you're constantly thinking about something that has made you so upset, some pain in your life that you don't even remember passing by all the things that you've driven by and somehow you arrive at your destination. Well, that's what's happening right here. They're so angered and so upset about how they interpret what has happened that they fail to recognize Jesus himself is present right there with them. Verse 25 reveals that to us. Jesus says, how foolish are you? How slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. You know, some versions even say, how foolish you are and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Their slowness of heart is what is keeping Cleopas and his friend from recognizing Jesus himself. My friends, their conversation lacks any spiritual dimension. Their viewpoint is based just on what they interpret. Their viewpoint here is from their human standpoint. Their human reasoning of these events that have taken place on Calvary. They're only thinking from their human standpoint. They're spiritually blind to what is happening they're under a tremendous amount of stress. And in that moment, they fail to remember anything that Jesus has taught them. They fail to remember the truth. And they're struggling to believe. And it wasn't until... They opened themselves up to God. It wasn't until they anchored themselves to the truths that they had been taught in the breaking of bread that they could see clearly. How often are we like that? How many times when stressful things come our way how many times when challenging things come into our lives that we fail to forget about who God is? About what Jesus has done for us on the cross of Calvary? How many times that it never enters our mind to think, about what God might be doing to bring about his will. How many times do we react from only seeing a part of the story? A portion that we see from our viewpoint. And we start to make our own assumptions 
our own decisions based upon our own reasoning. And then we start to doubt that God has the ability to work through all things. My friends, when we allow that to happen, we become blinded from seeing Jesus. We see the shapes, we see the sizes and all the facts, but we're kept from seeing all the vibrant colors and we don't see it in all their fullness. You know, it's only when Cleopas and his friends sit down in the quietness of the night Practicing solitude, breaking the bread. Where they have the moment to sit down and they start to look inwardly. That they have the ability to see with opened eyes. And they see something beautiful. It's when we're anchored to the word of God. It's when our lives are rooted in the truth of Scripture. It's when we practice the spiritual disciplines and we enter into those times of solitude that we have the ability to see Jesus clearly. It's when we lift ourselves out of the problems of the world and seeing it from the world's viewpoint that our eyes become wide open to our own unbelief and our own sin. Because when we become aware of our own unbelief and our own sin, it is only then that we have the ability to do something about it. This past week at confirmation and even then at church council on Thursday night, I asked them to stand around a chair that was in the middle of the room. And the chair was God. And I asked them if they'd ever lied to take two steps back, if they'd ever gossiped or talked about somebody, um, take three steps back, if we've ever made assumptions um, that, uh, about a situation that we didn't know the whole picture, you know, take two steps back. What happened What is as we take uh, the steps backward, we become separated from God. We start to not see clearly. God hasn't moved. We have. And not only as we stepped back from God, we started, uh, the uh, distance between each other became wider and wider. And then I asked them, if they've ever prayed, takes two steps forward. If you've ever read scripture, take three steps forward. If you went to worship, participated in the uh, spiritual disciplines, participated in and uh, partook of communion, we kept moving forward. And when we do those things, we become closer and closer to God and we start to see things clearly. I ask you this morning, how are you doing at practicing these spiritual disciplines? Because it's only in the practicing of spiritual disciplines such as scripture reading, entering into times of solitude, looking around the world um, and seeing where God is at work bringing about his glory, participating in communion, entering into regular times of prayer, and the list could go on and on and on, that our eyes become open to our own spiritual blindness. And when our eyes become open, we see, start to see all the colors, all the vibrant colors of where God is at work. And it's in that place that we can declare, just as Cleopas, Cleopas and his friend did, that our hearts are burning within and that we have seen the Lord. Will you stand with me? Let's pray. 
Oh God, do we come to you? We admit that so often, so often that we walk away, that we don't even think. But oh, thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us once again that you are at work. And all the trials of life, and all the ups and downs, may we see it with open eyes. And may we be thankful that you love us so much that you're walking with us along this road. May we sense your presence. May we return to you over and over again. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love and we thank you for your grace. In Christ's holy name, amen. Let us lift our voices as we sing and proclaim those words to open our eyes. May we go from this place knowing that the, the journey ahead that Jesus is right there. May our eyes be open. May our ears be open. May we be receptive to the Holy Spirit working within us so that we can say and proclaim along with the disciples that he is risen. May we go knowing that the, the blessings go with us as we go into a world to shine our lights, to share the gospel message with the world. We go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>